Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Jeff Garrett on a pigeon control mission in Essex, plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Jeff's lab is certainly excited, and so are we. We've got a big day at the pigeons ahead of us. Well, we're, we're going on rape, stubble, stroke, pulled up ground. Um, there's a little field, about 10 acres there, that's the last field of rape to be cut, uh, and they've just scratched the surface. They haven't actually ploughed it like they've done the rest of the fields. Um, so it's a case if I don't go today, I won't probably get an opportunity because that'll be ploughed up tomorrow. And, and this will be my first time actually on stubble this year. So fingers crossed we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get a reasonable day. Um, just been watching a bit of a flight line coming over the uh, motorway uh, and drifting out. There's a few pigeons out there now, so looking okay. But we'll just give it another 10 minutes and just basically get a hopefully the right place for the hide uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll go and set up. As Jeff slips down to locate his hide you can hear the busy motorway to his left but Jeff knows his ground well and he finds the perfect place to set up to give him a good range of safe and effective shooting angles. In record time he has the hide ready to go but what about the deeks? Official start today I managed to drive around this morning on my rounds and one sat a little bit too long so I had him out the window um, so we'll be starting with the one pigeon horseshoe pattern Jeff likes a challenge and he'll certainly get one with this not so elaborate decoy pattern still it's worked before and it can work again It's important that Jeff quickly increases the decoy pattern if he wants to build a big bag. Luckily, he's managed to double it already. There's a lot of activity about, so you know, hopefully, as we gradually build the pattern up, and we'll start getting them decoying in. Two decoys isn't much of a horseshoe either, but every little helps. With the extra bird in position, Jeff gets back in the hide to await the next customer. This could be a hot day, and both man and dog are well provided for with water and shelter. The pattern is developing nicely, propped up by regular tweaking. It keeps the birds coming steadily into Jeff's kill zone. Jeff takes low and high birds with ease, and things could be about to get even better. Number one son Josh rings to confirm he can join his dad in the hide. Yeah, all right then mate, yeah, just, just turn up when, uh, when you're ready. Uh, just park at the top there by the pylon. Walk down to the ditch and come along and join us, mate. We're, we're, we've been here for about an hour now, but just come and join us, mate. I've got the 20 ball with us and uh, we'll have a bit of fun. See you in a bit. Bye. A diet of Ely for the brown in Maxis. A diet of apples for Jeff. Number one son arrives along with a second seat and a pigeon that nearly made it to the trees before dropping. Okay. 
With two guns in the hide, things can really get going. But not before Jeff switched up the pattern again. Boy, fetch it, fetch it, fetch it. Good boy. In the pattern. Jeff can't resist having a go with a 20 bar over and under, and he soon finds he's on song with this diminutive browning. Good shot. The pigeons keep coming from all directions, with the boys picking them off expertly. This one nearly drops into the cameraman's lap. The one bird horseshoe seems long ago now, as we really get into a rhythm. As long as the incoming birds don't dry up, this could be a memorable day. For now we can sit back and enjoy the shooting. So far, it's, it's, we've got a bag, it's hard getting it, early on in the day, uh, pigeons didn't want a decoy, sun was right in our face, the moment we were moving the pigeons were seeing us, but we've got over that, I've moved the pattern around a couple of times, and we're now probably hitting 70, 80 mark, and it's probably about half two, quarter to three in the, in the afternoon now, so I think we've got gone through the worst part of it and also early on my shooting wasn't what it should be but I think I've got through that as well and uh, pulling it out forms temporary class is permanent. With both shooters performing the bag continues to build throughout the afternoon. Back one. The spent cartridge is also a build up. As always, they'll be removed in the end of day tidy up. With Jeff pausing to give George the Labrador some attention, Josh can step into the limelight and prove he's every bit the shot his dad is. Josh is really finding his rhythm with the Maxis, and every pigeon shot helps keep the field safe. But just how big will the final bag be? One here, look, this low yeah, one, look. Yeah. Go on, when you're ready, when you're ready. Shot. Good shot. That might be the last one in the day, mate. It's a good one to finish up on. Yeah. Uh, good shot. Uh, well, here we have uh, the classic horseshoe pattern. Hyde is behind me here. The wind has been predominantly in my back all day, although it has moved a little bit, but it's mainly been in the back, which has allowed me to give the classic horseshoe pattern. We've got a leg going out there and a leg going out there. The furthest point away from the hide is probably about 35, 40 yards on the end of each legs. But as the, as the point comes down, the killing zone comes down to, to my right here, 
um, about 10-15 yards away from the hide I've got a little hole and the same on the left here about 10-15 yards where there's another little hole the idea being that the birds they come down through the open part of the horseshoe looking for somewhere to land and for me I want to get the pigeons as close to the hide as I possibly can so when I get up that gives me all the time that I need to get onto a bird, shoot it and if I've killed that one with the first barrel it gives me the option of the second or third shot because they're still only 20-30 yards away. Well that's another day finished. Um, just had a good old um, pick up, clear up. Uh, we've got uh, 129 in the back of the truck. I've uh, been using the Browning Maxes. Uh, Josh has been using the B725 Browning 20 ball over and under. And um, halfway through the day we swapped over and I think Josh has probably shot the uh, the Browning Maxis more this afternoon and shot it very well I must add uh, been shooting the normal Ely Pigeon Select car just fibre wads shooting the Ely VIP 20 bore 30 gram 5 shot and uh, all that we've left today is uh, these wads here fibre wads felt wads we had the sun for probably three hours, four hours, absolutely glaring right into us. It's been a very hot day, hence the t-shirts and the shorts. And if you think this is bad enough, you want to see the cameraman's legs. It's put me off KFC for good. Um, I've never seen nothing like it. But uh, luckily, well, they were at the bottom half of the hide, so uh, the pigeons didn't, didn't worry too much about them. Jeff there, showing crop protection at its best. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Do you want to make your support of grouse shooting known? Basque has launched a new website that lets you do just that. Head to basque.org.uk slash grouse. There you'll be able to instantly lobby your MP, letting them know that you back grouse shooting in the face of anti-shooting propaganda. It's expected that there will be a debate in Parliament on grouse shooting, so it's important that all MPs know the strength of our views. For your fix of grouse shooting stories, don't miss iShoot magazine every month. Shooting is one of the nation's favourite activities to partake in in national parks. It's official. In a national park survey, shooting came third out of 23 activities, behind only walking and observing nature. It's even more remarkable because shooting wasn't actually an option on the poll. People had to write it in manually. The poll also asked what people thought should be prevented in the parks. In this poll, shooting came third from last. The Badger Cull trials will be extended once again this winter. Five new areas across the southwest of England will be added to the scheme, bringing the total to eight overall. In effect, this means the culls have quadrupled in scale since they began four years ago. Bovine TB is still thought to be one of the greatest threats to the beef and dairy industry in the UK, with an estimated cost of £100 million a year to farmers. And finally, there's new advice to help stop the spread of chronic wasting disease. The disease has now arrived in Scandinavia, which means the UK is at elevated risk. CWD isn't a risk to humans, but could devastate our deer populations. Now, the British Deer Society has reminded sporting agents and professional stalkers to make sure all their clients are aware of the disease. And if you're heading abroad to hunt, it's recommended that you don't take clothing and footwear back with you, as it's impossible to totally sterilise your kit. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.